Here is what happens in The Hack Driver by Sinclair Lewis. The narrator of the story was a junior assistant clerk at a big law firm. He had imagined that his work would be drafting legal documents. Sadly, all he was asked to do was serve summons, that is, deliver notices to people to appear in courts. His work mostly took him to shady parts of the city. Sometimes he would even get beaten up. One day, he was sent to a small town called New Mullion to serve summons to one Oliver Lutkins. Lutkins was needed as a witness in a case. The narrator was thrilled that he was going to the countryside. But what did he find when he arrived there? A muddy town with unpainted shops. New Mullion was not the typical charming country town at all. The only welcoming sight there was a red-faced 40-year-old man standing by the station. The narrator thought he looked friendly, so he approached him about Oliver Lutkins. The man replied that one would probably find Lutkins in Fritz's shop playing a game of poker. He also offered to drive the narrator around in a hack and help him find Lutkins. They haggled over the price of the hack and then there were off. As they travelled to Fritz's shop, the driver talked about the notoriety of Oliver Lutkins. Apparently, Lutkins owed everybody in town some money. Here, we learn the hack driver's name, Bill. Our narrator liked Bill quite a lot, so he told him why he was there. They didn't find Lutkins at Fritz's shop, so they moved on to Gustav's barber shop. From then, they walked down the main street to Gray's barber shop and the pool room. But no luck at all. They seemed to be missing Lutkins by a matter of minutes every time. The narrator was getting hungry now. He offered to buy lunch for Bill. But Bill suggested a picnic lunch on Wade Hill. For just half a dollar, his wife would pack them a lunch that would be better than what the local restaurants served. While having lunch, the narrator listened to Bill's stories about the charming inhabitants of New Mullion. The narrator, who came from a small town himself, thought about moving to the place and practicing law there. They resumed their efforts after lunch. A passerby told them that perhaps they could find Lutkins at his mother's farm. The woman was apparently a terror. She had once threatened to skin Bill because he couldn't treat her trunk as carefully as she had expected. She certainly seemed frightening when both of them confronted her on the farm. The narrator admired Bill's courage when he sternly told her to let them search for Lutkins. She retreated and let them in. But once they were inside the house, she grabbed a hot iron rod and threatened to burn them if they dared to search her house. Not surprisingly, Bill and the narrator ran for their lives. That woman, she was a terror. However, once they were safe, they went around the house. But Oliver Lutkins was nowhere to be found. Unsuccessful, the narrator left New Mullion and came back to the city. He was now in deep trouble with the firm. The firm's case rested on Lutkins' testimony. Our poor narrator was called a shameless, useless fool. His superior shouted at him and ordered him back to New Mullion. This time the narrator was accompanied by a man who had worked with Lutkins. At New Mullion station, the narrator was surprised to see Bill talking happily to Lutkins' mother. The narrator pointed this out to his companion and was stunned by the answer. Bill was Oliver Lutkins himself. The poor narrator was hurt, obviously by the way Lutkins deceived him, but also by the way Lutkins and his mother laughed when he served the summons. Then they pleaded with him to join them for coffee at a neighbor's place. Apparently, these neighbors were the only ones who could not meet him the previous day.